Hi, I'm Jordan from Kettner Creative. In this video, we're going to show you how to set up and connect the Blue Yeti USB microphone with an audio mixer. A lot of people want to do something like this in order to unlock the microphone, so to speak. Maybe you want to mix it with other microphones. Maybe you're looking at using some of the high-end features from an audio mixer like compression, EQ, or something like that. We're going to walk through all those options, show you what the options are, show you which settings I recommend, and how to connect this so you can record through an audio mixer to your computer. Now, if you are looking for current up-to-date pricing or specs for anything that you see in this video as we set this up, please check out the links down in the description below. We have current up-to-date pricing and specs from a variety of online retailers to make sure that you're always finding the best price possible if you're looking at buying anything like this. Next, you might be looking at this Blue Yeti and wondering why it's not on the factory stand like yours might be. We do have a separate video that I'll link in the description below as well with five tips tips to get your Blue Yeti sounding as good as possible without spending too much extra money, kind of $20 or $30 of accessories to get it up closer to your mic, add a shock mount, a windscreen, and some settings that we recommend that will really make your Blue Yeti sound much, much better. So do check that out as well. So first of all, in order to connect the Blue Yeti to an audio mixer here, you do need to make sure that it's powered. The best way to do that and the best starting point for this is to connect it to your computer and make sure that your gain is all set up as you normally have it to make sure that it's working properly for your input source, which is actually your voice going into the microphone. Once you have the Blue Yeti set up as you normally would have it set up, then we can talk about connecting it to an audio mixer. In this video, we have two different audio mixers here in front of me. I highly recommend both of these. You really can't go wrong with either one. The Yamaha has been super faithful to me. I've used it at thousands of live events over my career. Plus, our company has rented it out to close to seven or 8,000 events, and they've been absolutely bulletproof for us. The Mackie Pro FX 10V3 audio mixer is a little more full featured. It has the same reliability. I don't have as much experience in terms of thousands of events, but I've used it a lot and it does have some really, really cool features. We have another video on comparing these two. So if you are looking for an audio mixer, check that out as well. But for the purposes of this video, there are distinct differences between these two mixers. And we're gonna talk about that when it comes to connecting your Blue Yeti and making sure that you have the right settings set up uh, for what you're doing. So the best way to do this is, like I said, you power this up, you power up your audio mixer, and then we're gonna take the output from your headphone jack and plug that into the audio mixer. In order to do that, you'll need a cable like this one. This is the best type of cable to use for this. It'll basically take your headphone jack output from the Blue Yeti, and it'll convert it to two quarter inch cables so you can connect it to any audio mixer or audio interface. Typically, you'll always have one that's white and one that's red. The red is always for the right side. The white is always representing what would have been your left headphone. So we're going to plug this into the Blue Yeti now. Plug that cable into the headphone jack into the bottom of the Blue Yeti. So now we just have to connect this to the audio mixer. When you're connecting this to an audio mixer, you have two options generally on an audio mixer like this. You can plug it into the stereo line level inputs here. You can see that five and six on this audio mixer are linked to a single volume knob. You can see there it says level five, six. That means that with the two jacks, it'll sum them and give you a single volume knob, which is quite ideal for something like this. Another option here is to use the quarter inch input on this combi jack. You can see here that it says mic and line. The mic level input is referring to the XLR cable input here, and the line level input is referring to the quarter inch. Now, if you want, you can just plug one of these in and that'll work just as well. Most people by default will plug in the white end of the cable because that's the left ear. If you're going mono, most people say just to use the left side. Now, on the Mackie mixer here, we have the same inputs. We have six, seven, which are a stereo quarter inch input. And we have the combi jack inputs here, just like we have on the Yamaha. And we have some other ones that just say line three or line four. You can use any of those in the same way that we're about to use it with the Yamaha. But what's new on the Mackie here, and the reason that we brought this in, is it has an insert, which is also a quarter inch cable. You don't wanna be using this 
for your input. You wanna be using the line level input where it says mic and line up here. That's a way better input to use. The insert is a tool that you can use and it actually will take whatever's coming through this channel strip, send it to an external piece of gear and bring it back through that jack. So it's not an input jack. I do just wanna clear that up, give you a helpful tip there. So first of all, we're gonna try this with level five, six, with line five, six here on the Yamaha mixer. I'll plug it into there. Next, we're gonna turn the stereo level up all the way to this triangle position. On the Mackie mixer, there's a U, which stands for unity. That's the same thing. On some audio mixers, there's a zero or an infinity sign. They're all saying the same thing. That's where you wanna have that input or that main stereo output set. Next, we want to turn up this level here to this triangle zero or unity position. Now, right now, I have the gain on the headphone output set to about 60%, and you can see here that we're hitting zero. I don't like turning up the headphone jack here past 50% because it does start to get noisy and hissy. If you've ever turned up this headphone jack a lot, I'm sure you notice the same thing. But we don't have a lot of options here. We have a little bit of headroom, but it's the same thing on this Yamaha audio console or any other audio console. Once you turn it up past this triangle zero or unity position, you start to add more noise into your recording and it's not always the best way to do it. So one way that I prefer to do this the best for me is to unplug what we just did. Then we're gonna plug the white, sec the white cable into this first input here. We're gonna turn the level up to that zero unity position. But here we have a proper preamp that'll help us set the gain a little bit better. So I'm gonna turn the headphone down to 50%. I'm hoping that that will reduce some of the noise coming from the Blue Yeti, that background hiss. And you can see here that the level is at minus 10. So what I wanna do here is I wanna turn this gain up until we're consistently hitting zero. The preamp here is the best way to be adding gain or volume to your recording. You can see here it didn't take much, but now we're consistently hitting zero. And when I look over at my computer here, I can see that I'm getting a similar output from the Blue Yeti itself because I can see the meter for that and the Yamaha. So this is a better way with less noise to do it in my opinion and my experience. Now let's talk about some of the cool things that we can do with an audio mixer now that we have this connected. What are the benefits of connecting the Blue Yeti to an audio mixer like this? One of the first things that we can do is we can add compression. The Yamaha and the Mackie here have a one knob compressor. Basically what this does is it will kind of, a rough way to think about it is it will auto mix for you. It'll make your quietest parts a little bit louder. It'll make your loudest parts a little bit quieter. So you're not spending the whole time recording trying to mix and change the volume knob to make sure that the audio is sounding consistent. I'm going to turn this up to about 50% here. And you should be able to hear that it just narrows the dynamic range of my voice a little bit. And it does make it sound a little bit more even. Now you don't want to over compress because that'll act like a limiter, it kind of flattens you out and takes all the emotion out of what you're saying. But it is a useful tool if you have a bunch of microphones like this and you're recording something like a group podcast. This can be really effective for you. I can turn that off now. The next thing that you can do with a microphone like this plugged into an audio mixer is you can add a high pass filter or a low cut, depending on what your, what your mixer calls it. They basically do the same thing. I'm gonna click it on now, and basically offers a low end roll off. You might not even hear the difference depending on the headphones or the speakers that you're using, but this basically makes sure that nothing from this microphone goes below 80 hertz. Basically takes this out of the subwoofer of whatever device people are listening to you from. It cleans it up a little bit, just removes a little bit of that mud. Next, if you want the highs just a little bit more articulate, if you want to highlight the S's or something like that, you can turn the highs up. If the S's and the more sibilant frequencies are kind of annoying and shrill, if somebody has a lisp as they're speaking, you can turn that down a little bit and it will help to warm up that voice a little bit. If you want more articulation coming from your voice, you can turn up the mid just a little bit. It's at 2.5K, which is where most of the articulation from your voice comes from. 
Again, don't go too crazy with the EQ, but something like that could help you stand out a little bit. And again, you can do a little bit more of a low cut if you do want to kind of make your voice stand out a little bit more amongst background noise or something like that. There's some simple things that you can do that should help your Blue Yeti to sound a little bit better and a little bit more clear in your recording. And that's one of the main benefits of connecting to an audio mixer plus the ability to mix it with other microphones. So what are the downsides of doing this? What are the things that you need to look out for to make sure that you're not actually degrading the quality of your audio? To help illustrate the point here, let's talk about the Blue Yeti in itself. It's a USB microphone, which means that it has a built-in audio interface. There's a microphone, which is an analog pickup device, then it converts it to a digital signal. Then for the headphone jack, it's converting it back to an analog signal. It's coming to the Yamaha mixer here where you're adding gain, level knob, another level, and then you're converting it to a digital signal for your computer. So you have a, the gain on the back of the Blue Yeti, the gain for the headphone output, gain, level, level. So there's five different devices that have the ability to add noise into your recording. That background hiss that might be annoying. You might notice it, you might not, depending on the headphones or the speakers that you're using. And then generally, so not only are bad five gain devices generally a bad thing in any input chain, but you also are going analog, digital, analog, digital to your computer. Every time you go back and forth between analog and digital, you will increase things like noise and latency as well. So that's the big thing that you want to look out for here. You don't want to get too crazy with the gain on your Blue Yeti. You don't want to get too crazy with the volume on your headphone output. You want to keep most levels at that triangle or unity position, if at all possible, and use as little gain as possible to avoid adding unnecessary noise into your recording. That is the biggest thing that you want to be looking out for with a setup like this one. If you have any questions that we didn't cover in this setup, please leave a comment down in the comment section below. Again, if you are looking for pricing or specs, we have links down in the description below with pricing and specs for you. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.